guys how are you all doing it's your girl cindy and i'm back again today with another gist i trust you guys are doing great i trust you guys had a wonderful time today thank you so much for clicking to watch this video so i just want us to see this guy's video today he is mad at black people now take a look at the caption of his video it was the caption that drew my attention because this video just popped out of my for you page i i looked at the caption and i had to check the comment section out of course the comment section didn't disappoint so in this video this man proceed to ask black people this question why you're always claiming that everything is about white supremacy and racism of course i can't make this up i'm gonna let this video roll so you all can hear everything he said please check this video out why are black gen xers so pissed off nowadays you guys grew up in the same generation i did the generation of the 80s and 90s that dealt with the best race relations in the history of this country you ain't never seen a klansman i ain't never seen a klansman what the hell are y'all so mad about why are you always claiming that everything is about white supremacy and racism you know damn well it's not you always got a scowl on your face mad about something you grew up in the 80s and 90s again just like i did we grew up with jordan on our walls bumping master p dr dre snoop tupac east coast west coast then we took it into the 2000s we had cash money back that ass up you lived on my couch i lived on yours i ate dinner with your family you ate dinner with mine we worked together we lived together we went to school together Again, I'm going to ask you, what are you so angry about that ain't self-inflicted? Is it because Donald Trump came down that gold escalator, you cried, you told us he's racist, and we told you, no, he's not? Hey, we just went on y'all's 30 years of co-signing for him telling us he wasn't racist. It's going to take more than a because I said so to convince us. Come on, it ain't too late. Jump on the Trump train with me. I'll accept your apology. Okay, so towards the end of this video, he says, I will accept your apology, like black people's apology. Now, I am wondering why this video is still up on TikTok because I know that if it were to be a black person, TikTok will not only take the video down, the black content creator will be shadow banned, you know. But when it comes to a white person, the video will still be up. So a lot of black people staged his video, which I have put those videos together. Let's just hear from them. And of course, I'm going to show you some screenshots of comments, you know, I grab from his comment section. Let's check the cities out. Are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys... I'm a millennial. I was born in 1990. So I may feel a little out of place talking about this. I may I may feel a little out of place. But I was raised by Gen X. I was raised, I was raised by Gen X. Like most of us millennials that were raised by Gen X. Maybe some early to mid boomers, but most of us were raised by Gen X. So I was raised by Gen X. Black Gen X. And black Gen X and white Gen X are just not the same. I'm sorry. I really am, no. You know, my mom, pop, unks, aunties, you know, even some other mentors, whether it was a coach, a teacher, you know, any, any kind of mentor I had, you know, black Gen X, their stories are different, way different. The experience is way, way different. They act and think differently. They really do. They really do. I'm just going, I'm just keeping it real. I know, I feel, I know as a millennial, I probably shouldn't be speaking on this, but do you know what black Gen X had to go through? Literally, do you? You know, I tend to refer to black Gen X as the post-civil rights kids. That's what I call them. That's what I call them. No, just, no disrespect. No disrespect to the elders. But the amount of trauma they had to go through in that generation is just... 
I can see why a lot of them are tough the way they are or as the way they are. I really do. Let's do a little history. After you done assassinate all the civil rights leaders, King, Malcolm, Fred Hampton, you know, Allah the Father, aka also known once known as Clarence Thirteen X, founder of the Five Percent Nation, um, the death of Med 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 Medgar Evers. A lot of things changed once that civil rights bill was passed. A lot of things changed. A lot of things, and we thought it was gonna be good with integration and all that stuff, but a lot of things started to really change and. It took a lot of opportunity away from them. By the time the late 60s and 70s were moving on, you saw a real big increase of single mothers in the black community. Yes, yes. A lot of, so much. My father's, my father was raised by a single mother, my granny. She had to raise him and my three aunties by herself, by herself. The last key kids, there's different levels to that. There's different levels to that. He had to work along with my aunties just to help my granny pay rent. Yes, yes. And that's not also talk about how you started really, really defunding, the, started taking away certain programs away, starting, you know, you know, the funding wasn't coming into the cities, you know, you know, putting people in the projects. Yes, yes. You started defunding the schools heavily. You know how there used to be trades in schools? Because my aunties used to tell me all the time how there used to be trades in schools. There used to be so many trades. You know, you you didn't you, can, you didn't have to go to college back then. You could just graduate with a trade and start go go straight to work. They took start taking them out. Yes, yes. You forget about the the eighties? Oh, the eighties, man. I don't know how y'all survived it. I don't know how you survived it. I really don't. That was a decade that crack, AIDS, and the camcorder came out. <laughs> and gang banging went to an all-time high. They weren't just little pistols and shotguns. Cats were having, were starting to come out with them, with the real thumpers. The Uzis, the Max, the Tex. Yeah, they started coming out around, around the 80s a lot more. Yes. Yes, they had it rough. Yes. It's funny, I think, when I watch the movie Crooklyn, I think about them. I really do. I really do. And you said they never seen clan members. Well, all depends where you lived. Because I talked to, to a, quite a few Gen Xers that grew up in the South. They were still doing clan rallies down there, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. They were still doing slight few lynchings here and there. I don't know what you're talking about. And if you grew up more of like the West Coast or maybe even like the Northeast or the East Coast or maybe more of the Midwest, the clan members were just a little different. They wore badges. They were the judge. They were the teacher. They were the lady at the supermarket. They work at the bank. They were city officials. Yeah. Black Gen X had it tough. They had it tough. But they gave us a lot too. They gave us a lot of wisdom. They gave us strength. They may have been real rough. They may have, may have roughed us up a little bit, but they gave us strength. They gave us a work ethic. They taught us to handle our business. Y'all really did. I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for Black Gen X. I wouldn't. So I say this to all of Black Gen X. Because y'all about to retire. Y'all y'all retiring. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> y'all pretty much hitting retirement now. I salute y'all. I do. They butt heads, especially when I was younger. <laughs> but I salute y'all. I really do. So to the man in that video... You and Black Gen X are not the same. Not the same. Not at all. The 80s and 90s that dealt with the best race relations in the... And that right there is a perfect example of 
modern day cultural appropriation that was spearheaded by Generation X, the white people at least. They were the first to full-throatedly appropriate black culture and shift all of our culture into a commodity where they are the main audience. That motherfucker said they were the best race relations in history in the 80s and 90s. Do you know that they had a race riot in Boston in 1984 because they were desegregating schools and poor white people in Boston didn't want black students in their community. This is this is the generation of Rodney King. It's the generation of Columbine. But all he heard was Tupac. All he heard was the music that he listened to, that he probably listened to to piss off his parents. That's all he heard. He didn't hear anything else. He didn't see anything else. He didn't see the broken window policies in New York. He didn't see all those kids getting murdered, all the black men disappearing and being lynched. None of that. He didn't see none of that. He didn't see anything that was happening in the 80s thanks to Reagan. Crack epidemic, welfare queen stereotype being created. He didn't see none of that shit. All he heard was the music. And he taught his kids that. And his kids are teaching their kids that. So all of us get to deal with our own special variety of tone deaf white folk. Happy Wednesday. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys. Well, since you asked, gaslighting, plain and simple. We're sick of being gaslit. We're sick of being told that things that are overtly racist aren't racist. You see, I'm Gen X, 73 born. I'll actually be 51 tomorrow. And we watched our parents complain about being gaslit. We watched them complain about being gaslit over things like equal employment. We watched them have qualifications to for certain jobs for certain careers for advancement we watched our parents not get those and be told that they didn't get them not because of the color of their skin but because they weren't qualified despite being qualified despite having the education despite having the experience we watched our parents um have the experience for certain jobs and then train their white counterparts to be their 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 supervisors we watch those things and we kind of have watched you pick up where your parents left off whereas our parents were gaslit on things like equal employment war on drugs Yada, yada, yada. We're gaslit on, you know, things like police brutality. You know, we sit there and we see the statistics of how black people are policed more, policed heavier. And we know that the, the, the rate of unarmed black people being shot and killed by police is higher, substantially higher than any other community, yet we're told that it's not because of the color of our skin. We're told that it's not because of racism, just as your parents would tell us, would tell our parents that certain things that were overtly racist weren't racist. And so seeing you guys pick up where they left off, yeah, hell yeah, that's annoying. Hell yeah, that pisses us off. So, I mean, it reminds me of actually a quote that I heard from Dr. King during the Civil Rights Movement. He said that the one of the biggest threats to the Civil Rights Movement was the conservative white Christian. And he said that because it was the conservative white Christian that despite their beliefs and despite how much... How, how how much morality they spoke of, 
they always tried to tell the black people who were experiencing the racism that it wasn't as bad as they thought it was. It wasn't as bad as they were making it out. They would say things like, well, it's we've made strides, we've made progress. And at least it's not as bad as it was a hundred years ago during slavery. <laughs> Ridiculous. And so it's just ironic to me that we are still experiencing the same thing today. That we today, like our parents before us, like our grandparents before, before them, are still experiencing the same things. Regardless of the education that we have regardless of the experiences that we have we are still told being told that the racism that we are seeing that the racism that we are experiencing is not racism and it's pissing us off we're being told that the certain things that we see um our politicians do are not because of the color of our skin and we know that it is and we're tired of you telling us that that's not what it is. Just like our parents were tired. Just like their parents before them were tired. It's the same bullshit, different day, different generation, everything. So, there you have it. We're sick of being gaslit. And this doesn't go for all white Gen X. I got lots of white Gen X friends. That we were cool in the 70s and 80s and we are cool now. So this doesn't go for them or those like them. But it goes for guys it goes for guys like this guy in this video who thinks that just because we like the same music, that we went to the same schools, that our experiences in this country are the same. They're not the same. We're not the same. Yeah, we may have both liked Phil Collins and Easy e and whatever other artist that this guy went on to talk about in this video. If you care to watch, even watch the rest of the video that he made. Yeah, we liked all the same stuff, but we are not the same. You did not go through what I went through then, and you don't go through what I go through now. So, there you have it. Stop the gaslight. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off that? Well, I go back and watch that whole video. I watched it the whole time thinking there was a punchline like it was satire. He's serious. I, <clears throat> you spent that entire video guy trying to invalidate an entire group of people that you very obviously can't relate to. Like, you are the embodiment of white privilege. Congratulations. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys. Because unlike our parents and grandparents, we actually are telling you people exactly how the fuck we feel. And we black Gen Xers are really sick and tired of white Gen Xers talking about us like we ain't in the motherfucking room. This is not a secret. The difference between you, white Gen Xers, and us is that we learned from our parents. We saw the disrespect your parents gave them. And we just decided, fuck that. How many of you white Gen Xers have fallen in line with Trump? Any of y'all come to us trying to sell him to us? We don't want him. We still remember 1989. Ain't nobody fucking with that dude. And then it's the temerity of every single fucking time we turn around. Somebody that looks like you is talking about somebody that looks like me. Like we ain't in the goddamn room. Even amongst this fucking latchkey generation, there's still separation because we're starting to not trust y'all. Y'all true colors are coming out. They are. Some of y'all have betrayed our generation. Because y'all got your ass right in line with the fucking generation before us. And then y'all turn around and telling us shit. Why don't y'all ever address us directly? Why do y'all need these videos? 
If you have enough people, won't you go live and ask that question out loud? Except nothing but black Gen Xers. Let's have this conversation. Maybe you might learn something. Or y'all going to do the exact same fucking thing y'all always do. Talk over us. You want to talk about race relations? The fuck do you know about it? What the fuck do you know about race relations? You want to know what else was going on in that race relation great generation? The war on drugs that was started under Nixon, accelerated under Reagan. And then one of Nixon's aides said that it basically was illegal. They knew it and they did it anyway. I guess you don't remember that, right? Right? I guess you 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 were asleep when they when we discussed the crack era and how it just decimated an entire fucking generation of people. Did you miss that part? I guess you missed HIV and AIDS. You want to talk about race relations in our generation. We didn't have that. We didn't. They picked out a bunch of fucking tokens like Clarence Thomas. They ain't speak to us. They didn't speak to us. Reagan's policies fucked us first, hardest, and beyond reproach. And nobody like you gave a fuck. We grew up in two totally different fucking areas, dog. We did. When's the first time you ever saw a man die? When's the first time you ever saw a crackhead? When was the first time? When was that first time? Describe to me the story. I really want to hear it. But that's the problem. That's the problem. Even amongst the Gen X generation, there is no, no solidarity because we come from two totally different fucking mindsets, two totally different fucking backgrounds, two totally different fucking lifestyles, life experiences. And you want to ask why we're so fucking angry? Because we got to listen to y'all talk for us. We are not the goddamn same. We are not the goddamn same. You might have been a latchkey kid because your mom and dad had to work. I was a latchkey kid because my mother was raising fucking five children by her damn self in the projects during the crack era, which you probably didn't know any damn thing about. Our ge this whole fucking generational thing is fine. I'm great. I'm cool. I'm Gen Xer. But I'm also a black man in America, and I know better. I know better. That's why I would never hitch my wagon to a motherfucker like goddamn Donald Trump. He makes y'all feel the kind of way. Y'all are nostalgic for the 50s. When the fuck did that start happening? Any answer, any, any answer for that? But you want to talk about this generational solidarity and why are black Gen X is mad? Because we have to keep listening to y'all reminisce. We didn't have it that goddamn good. We got family members that did fucking decades in prison. For holding on to plants and shit. Little weed. Oh shit. Give them 15, 20 years. Now they have weed dispensaries in different states. Ain't nobody trying to get them, fuck, them people out. None of them. So spare me with that bullshit about why we're angry. And another thing. If you want to talk to us, talk to us. Talk to us. Because just like you Gen X, God damn it, so am I. So am I. And if you can't talk directly to me, don't fucking talk about me. If you can't talk directly to us, don't fucking say shit about us. We ain't the fucking same. Get the fuck out of here. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys. So I got a minute. So let me help you out. Let's see. So while you were bumping to Master P and Tupac and, you know, we were chilling and hanging out and we bruz because that's how we move you just won't see our pain so let me break it down for you especially back then we still had to deal with segregation to a certain extent you see redlining our parents couldn't buy houses where you lived at and even though you had old boy on your wall he still couldn't go to certain places without, without being seen as the N-word. Um, we had to deal with not being allowed the best educations because 
even up till today, schooling is based on the zip code you live in. We had to deal with racism at work. Our parents had to deal with racism at work. We were told stuff like we were uh, quota hires. We had to deal with microaggression. So much, bro. I know, you know, when we were hanging out with you and we were piling with you, you thought everything was good on our side, didn't you? Right? You just thought everything was so mad cool. Like, racism is over. You think we mad? I challenge you to talk to your side of town and ask them why. Why? I don't know. Trump gave them some keys or, or, or some joy juice or something to drink where their racism came out full on. Full on, bro. And oh, we got reminded. We got reminded of who we are real quick. Do I need to call all the names for you? All of the names of the young men who were unalived and women? So we got reminded real quick who we are. So yeah, bro, we angry. We straight up mad. If you want to understand, let's have a conversation instead of you judging us and asking us why we angry. Why you ain't angry? Why ain't you angry? If you've been hanging out with us and you were pals with us and you listen to our music and all of that, why ain't you mad? You asking us why we mad? So you up, you ain't up on game then. You really don't know what's going on. You lost in the fray or something. We ain't that lucky, bro. We can't bump to. We can't even. We can't even sing country music without being told we need to stay in our place. And you wanna know why we mad? Trayvon, why we mad? Do I need to call more names? You want to know why we mad? I say Trayvon because that boy got a, had a pack of Skittles. And you know what someone told me once? If he wasn't guilty, why did he run? Why we mad? And guess, guess what color this person was. And I love that person. And... This is the type of ignorance we have to try to explain to people. You want to know why we mad? You ain't seen mad yet, bro. We still chill. We still can laugh with you and be friends with you because that's how we roll. But if you really know why we mad, maybe you should pull up a chair and really do the research on why we mad. Stop talking to your black friends, bro, because maybe y'all ain't having the serious conversations. Maybe you're just bumping your head to Master P. It's time to do some real research, bro. It's time to really get down and dirty, because maybe your friendship was just about bumping to Master P. Ain't, ain't bumping on that real, real. So it's time to get real. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys. My friend, you just want to go viral, huh? That was your whole goal was to make a video to go viral. Because let me smack that real quick. So you say there was no reason for black people to be upset because of the 80s and the 90s? Yousef Hawkins, Letitia Harlins, Miles Green, Rodney King. The semi four who got off for beating Rodney King. The Watts riots. There was many reasons black people should be mad about the 80s and the 90s. The crack epidemic. The mass incarceration. There's many reasons. But you want to act like because there was no social media, you didn't see it. I personally seen the Ku Klux Klan in Louisville, Kentucky in 1981 as I was bused from the West End to out to the East End where the white people was 
And the Ku Klux Klan was standing on the corners with signs saying, nigger, go home. As an elementary kid in the first grade, I also experienced institutionalized racism when I was told that I was too dumb to go from the West End to the East End to go to school. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky all had the same school district. So what was ever being taught in the East End should have been taught in the West End. But because they was busting blacks from the West End to the East End, they said, well, these blacks, they wasn't getting the correct education. So we're going to have to hold them back so they can get on track with their white counterparts. So please don't tell black people what they experienced in the 80s and the 90s. Country, you ain't never seen a Klansman. I ain't never seen a Klansman. What Hi, Black Gen Xer here. Um, let me answer that question for you. And actually to dispute what you said, I actually have met a few men who were part of a few different types of nations. Um, I spent about three years living in Berlin. And while I was there, I got in touch with a bunch of people who were skinheads, who I thought were, you know, like the neo-Nazis, but they really weren't. It's a whole different sect. But they showed me what an Aryan cross looked like. And one night while I was sitting in a bar, casually enjoying a drink all by myself, a gentleman of the Caucasian persuasion came over to talk to me. Now, I am known for dating in the swirl. Got no problem with it. First husband was white. Second husband was white and Latino. This man had an Aryan cross tattooed on his fucking neck and had the audacity to sit down and try to hit on me. When I tell you the fear in his eyes when I asked him how he thought someone with an Aryan cross was going to sit and talk to a black chick, I'm not kidding. So no, I have seen Klansmen, I have seen racists, I've spent quite a bit of time around a multitude of different people. And if you want to know why black Gen Xers are angry about race relations, when you say that we had some of the best race relations, we didn't. We were taught to keep quiet around you. We were taught never to discuss anything race related with you. We were taught to be afraid of you. What you thought was good race relations was just us keeping quiet. And now we're not doing that. And it seems to be bothering you. I'm very curious as to that. Is it because you felt as though because no one ever spoke to you growing up that it didn't exist? Because it did. You just didn't see it because it wasn't your lived experience. I can't help thinking back to something that someone told me that nobody knows their oppressor better than the oppressed. We understood that discussing these things with you could be potentially dangerous to us. And so we didn't. So I hope that answers your question as to why so many of us are so angry now. It's bottled up internal rage that we have carried around with us for damn near 50 fucking years. And now we're a little tired of it and we don't want to be bothered with it anymore. So when people come out of their mouths and say stupid shit, like I don't see color, everybody's the same to me, which by the way means that you negate our entire lived experience. We're going to start saying shit now. Anywho, that's been my spiel for the day. I hope that helped Okay. Bye. Why are black Gen Xers so pissed off nowadays? You guys. First off, fuck you for asking such a dumbass question. Gen Xers in general are typically angry. Our entire generation grew up not giving a fuck. But to answer your specific question, why might we black Gen Xers have an issue? Even though you claim that for whatever reason, we never saw KKK members, you're a motherfucking lie. We saw you motherfuckers the entire time. It's just that you took your goddamn white uniforms off and perpetuated the same fucked up racism that we saw back then. And you perpetuated that shit into the present day and you indoctrinated your bastard children into being the exact same racist fucks that many of you were the entire time. See, the only difference was you learned from your predecessors that if you said certain things to our faces, you knew that we would fuck you up. But then after a while, you started politicizing everything to where now 
through propaganda, through various other attempts at trying to soften it, that now this generation of children who live today aren't so readily available, aren't so easily triggered to give you exactly what you probably deserve when you say those things to their faces now. See, the only, the only difference was you found ways, inventive ways, I'll grant you that, to be racist in other ways, in more subversive ways, that unfortunately this generation hasn't picked up on enough to truly recognize and treat it for what the fuck it really is. But you see, we're old enough to remember exactly what the racism of our predecessors looked like and what your form of racism looks like in this present day. Your little bullshit microaggressions and your attempts at gaslighting us into forgetting what the past looked like and what your version of racism looks like to, the, to this day and how you're trying to subvert different ways or otherwise disguise what your present day versions of racism look like or worst of all worst of all you try to gaslight us into thinking that somehow you've become better people when you really haven't all you've done is just turn a blind eye to our experiences you've just delved even deeper into the apathy that you had all along so it's not so much that we didn't have an experience. You didn't give a fuck to even notice what the experience we were having even looked like, what it was. So now, since our experience was somewhat different from that of our predecessors, you tell yourselves that we had no experience at all. So to that, again, I say fuck you and fuck you very much. Don't ask me why the fuck I'm angry. You know exactly why the fuck I'm angry and the rest of the black Gen Xers are angry. But in typical Generation X fashion, you didn't give a fuck then, you don't give a fuck now, and more than likely you won't give a fuck in the future, which is why I say with no hesitation, fuck you. Or otherwise, Fuck you too. Anyways, guys, I took some screenshots of comments, like I said, so you guys can see what other people said, you know, in his comment section. Now, beside me are some of these comments. Please pause to read if you want to. But I love the fact that a lot of people, black people to be precise, you know, came all out, you know, staged his video, literally educating him and reminding him. Now, I get it. Some people will be like, why do you all give them so much attention? Why stitching their videos? Why responding to them? The truth is, if people don't come out to respond to them, a lot of people might think that these people are, you know, giving out um, the right information. So I'm happy that people responded to this guy you know um bringing out receipts and reminding him and then of course people get to know the truth so yeah let me know what you all think in the comments i thought i should bring this video here so we all can you know see this video together uh i would love to know your take on this and guys thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like this video share comment and of course come back for another video i'm gonna see you all in my next one yeah, take care. Bye.